Hello, Tristan. And if everybody wants to say uh, hi and where they're where they're from, where they're where they're uh, connecting from, that's always fun to do in the chat window. Albuquerque. Okay. Nice. Chicago, Saskatoon, Tampa, Portugal, Siberia. Siberia. Hey, we're good. India, San Francisco, Netherlands, oh, Cutter. Philippines. Kazakhstan. Moscow. Morocco, New York, excellent. And New Jersey exit 117. Do not zoom while you're driving. <laughs> you pull over and, uh, and place the car in park. Australia. So some folks are, what, logging in super late? Uh, we're still plenty of time here. Okay, we're halfway to breaking Zoom. Halfway. Uh, the goal is to break Zoom today. That is John's goal. Let's Can see. you go ahead and enable everybody's video stream while that video? <laughs> <laughs> Bogota, welcome. Okay, so it looks like we're at 2.52. Um, shall we give people a couple more minutes or do we want to start? Okay, let's do a couple more minutes. Christy, can you send me the link, please? I can start answering some of the questions. Yes. Thank you. I think you should have gotten your own link, Vivica. Let me see if I can. I can't hide you, Christy. So um, I think Christine will mention this in a little while, but uh, we'll use chat for to get everybody uh, logged in and see where everybody's calling in from. And then the questions go into the Q&A section. So make sure you don't ask questions in the chat box. Um, and so I'm going to answer live all of these questions from uh, people um, saying they're from Atlanta and Chicago. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um, we're at 278 attendees. Oh, and yes, we are all, all muted. Uh, somebody has a baby with them and you can let that baby cry as much as she wants, he or she wants to cry. Um, Cause uh, I believe all the participants are muted. Yes, they are. Yeah, and, and, and babies are welcome. There you are. Okay, there's sure. Ivica. Okay, very good. So we're at 11.04 Central Time. Let's also, Justin asks if we can see the attendance and no, we can only see the, the names of people in the chat window. We can't see anybody through your webcam. So rest assured, if, uh, right. if you're connected up, we can't see you. Okay, great. So um, we're uh, five minutes after. Let's go ahead and just get started. Um, people will filter in. Um, so as John mentioned before, Let's go ahead and do a quick introductions, first of all. Um, okay. So John and Vivica, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourselves and then I'll go ahead after. Sure. Um, welcome everybody. My name is John Hart. I'm a professor and the director of online and professional programs uh, in the Department of Computer Science here at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. Good morning, everyone. My name is Vivica Kudadikuma and I'm the coordinator for Computer Science Graduate Programs. Okay, great. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Christine Martinez. I'm an academic advisor with MCSDS. Um, so how we're going to go ahead and start start off, um, I'm going to go ahead and share a slide deck to give a uh, brief overview of how the program 
works and what are the requirements um, and some frequently asked questions. Um, and then after that, we'll go ahead and answer some questions or answer your questions that you will drop into the Q&A. Drop into the Q&A, not into the chat box, please. So I will go ahead and start the slide. Let's see. And please let me know when you can see it. Yep, I can see it. Okay, perfect. Okay, and then John, do you want to go ahead and just address these slides as we go? Yeah. You and Vivica? Okay, perfect. So moving on to the first slide. Yes, welcome everybody, and thanks for your interest in um, in our online MCS uh, program. We have a Master's of Computer Science degree, um, and um, we we started that out. We rolled that out as a um, uh, with a focused track in data science. It's called the MCS DS, and so the MCS DS is a Master of Computer Science degree in data science, meaning you get a you get the degree of Master of Computer Science, uh, which is our professional degree that we've offered for uh, decades, um, but through a focused track of classes, uh, and that focuses on data sciences. Um, and we are now rolling out additional classes beyond our data sciences track of classes, so that you can get the uh, Master of Computer Science now in a broad range of areas across a broad uh, uh, array of topics, some focused in data science, but some focused outside of data science. So for data science, uh, the courses that you would focus on would be uh, data mining, data visualization, machine learning, and cloud computing. Um, and then you can take some additional classes, uh, but you would have at least four courses in those four core areas of data science. And that would satisfy the requirements for the Master of Computer Science. We also, <clears throat> excuse me, we also um, offer, are offering new courses in the coming year, uh, courses in software engineering, in parallel programming, and in numerical uh, computing, uh, scientific computing, uh, and, and other classes, uh, uh, programming languages, and so on. So other areas of computer science um, that, um, that work alongside data sciences, um, but are, are broader and, uh, you know, into other areas of uh, uh, of computing, like high performance computing and, uh, and parallel programming and so on. So I just wanted to start out by making that distinction. You can still get the same MCS DS degree. It's, it's just a master of computer science uh, that you're satisfying with data science classes. Uh, your degree will be MCS, the master of computer science. But um, if, you, if you satisfy the, uh, the degree with the um, with those particular uh, classes from that focused core of data science classes, then you got an MCS DS, and you can list an MCS DS or an MCS data science on your resumes and on LinkedIn and everything else. But if you want to if you want to focus on some other area of computer science beyond data science, then the entire array of classes for a master of computer science is available for you now. Good. Um, so, what are we looking for in our applicants? Um, uh, we, we get a, a wide array of applicants. Um, the Master of Computer Science has been offered for, you know, um, for quite a while now. We've offered it online since the 90s. And largely our audience for this degree has been computer scientists. So, a, a student would get a bachelor's degree in computer science and then they would get a master's degree in computer science, and that's a professional degree. It, it consists of coursework, and it's um, graduate level coursework on top of a bachelor's degree in computer science. Now, we are finding uh, an increasing number of students that wanna add a master of computer science on top of a bachelor's degree in some other discipline. So we get a lot of uh, other engineering students that wanna work in what's called computational science or computational uh, engineering, where you're using um, computer science in an engineering discipline. Um, we have an upcoming scientific computing class, this numerical um, computing class that's really focused on that. And so we get a lot of uh, applicants that want to add an MCS on top of an engineering degree or an MCS on top of a science degree to do computational science, to, to use computing and data uh, for a particular scientific discipline like chemistry or uh, um, uh, 
molecular biology. We also have a, um, uh, we have students that are coming in from the humanities and the arts. Um, Tom Siebel, uh, we're right now sitting in the Siebel Center for Computer Science. Tom Siebel started up Siebel Systems, a major database system for um, uh, connecting with people and, uh, and employees and, and managing uh, connections. And the, um, uh, Tom Siebel got his bachelor's degree in history. Um, and then he added on top of that a, a master's degree in computer science, so, uh, and as well as an MBA. So we're starting to see uh, people use an MCS similar to you would use an MBA or a law degree where you get a degree in some discipline and then you add the MCS uh, on top of that the same way that you would add an MBA on top of a disciplinary degree. So we're open to that and we've been getting a lot of applications, a lot of successful uh, MCS students um, taking that route and uh, we will uh, um, look for all of uh, uh, we'll welcome those applications and that's a perfectly good uh, use of the MCS in addition to being a, a professional capstone degree for somebody um, that, that's working in computer science directly. Um, if you're coming to us uh, with a degree not in computer science or not in a computing related area like computer engineering or software engineering, you have a bachelor's degree in some other area of science, engineering, humanities, the arts, or, or any other area, um, uh, we, we have to have certain prerequisites for those degrees. And um, so you'll need to know some programming because you'll be taking graduate courses in computer science and we are a top program uh, and uh, these courses are, are considerable. So you need to come in with some programming experience. Um, that programming experience needs to be data structures. That's a key prerequisite for us. We have a course here at Illinois called CS225, and you can Google UIUC and then CS225 and find that course. That's our data structures course. Um, in order to get into this program, you at least need to have that because all of our graduate level classes list data structures as a, a necessary prerequisite. So um, you have to have a class in data structures, and hopefully you've already taken a class in data structures uh, for a grade, and it's on your transcript when you apply, and you'll check the box on the application that says data structures, and then you'll enter the name of the course, the number of the course, um, when uh, you took the course, where you took the course, and the grade you got in that course. And just put that in the little text box on the application, and we'll check that off for you. Um, if you haven't taken the data structures class, then I'd encourage you to uh, take some programming classes, take a data structures class at a community college or online or um, in, in, in some manner. It's, it's strongest if you can take these classes uh, for a grade in some transcriptable manner. That's, that, that's the, the strongest way you can represent your computer science knowledge on your application if you don't have a degree in computing already. Uh, in addition to data structures, uh, it's helpful to have some experience with algorithms and object-oriented programming. Um, typically, students will have taken a class that's used C++ or Java, and if you haven't had C++ or Java, it's, it's useful to have some experience with uh, one of those programming languages. Those are production uh, uh, software engineering programming languages. Um, almost everybody has some experience with a scripting language like Python or R. Um, but uh, it's helpful to know one of those object-oriented uh, production languages like C++ or Java. Uh, typically, we like to see students have at least uh, two or three computer science classes that they've taken. Um, you know, usually it's an introductory a programming course and a data structures course. It's really helpful if you've taken some, um, you know, upper level uh, undergraduate course in computer science and you have a, a grade to show with that. Um, uh, if you have that, then um, um, that, that, can be, uh, that can be really uh, helpful to show how, how you'll perform uh, taking graduate level classes here at the University of Illinois. So all of that is really helpful if, you, if, you've, got, uh, if you've got that, make sure to put that on your uh, application. Uh, in addition to that programming background, um, we're, um, uh, the degree is a master's degree, a master's degree of computer science, and so you have to have a bachelor's degree in order to get a master's degree. Graduate degrees are focused, uh, bachelor's degrees are, are often multidisciplinary, and we have to have that representation 
of bachelor's degree knowledge in order to confer a, a master's degree. Um, and uh, typically, we look for a GPA of 3.2 or higher on a 4.0 scale. Um, if your GPA is, is calculated differently at another institution, we have formulas that will convert it to a 4.0 scale. Um, and we look at the last two years of your GPA. And especially we look at your grades in your computer science classes. So uh, the grades are important in, in those classes and, and we'll tend to look at those. Also, we use a holistic uh, method for evaluating applications. We don't just look at, uh, at specific individual items, we look at the application as a whole. And so there may be additional materials that, that you have that um, and we will consider everything we can in order to um, admit you into the program. But uh, at the same time, we wanna make sure that um, if we admit you that you have everything you need in order to be able to succeed um, in our graduate classes and to complete the degree. Um, um, and then finally, uh, uh, for many of our classes, it's, it's good to have linear algebra and some basic statistics and or probability class. Uh, uh, and we have some additional statistics and probability classes as well, but linear algebra especially is, uh, um, is important uh, for, for, for many of our computer science classes. So we look for that as well. Uh, anything to add to that? No, I think I just said this one, so good. Okay, good. Now I'll go to the next slide, Christine. Okay, so before we go to the next slide, um, just real quickly, don't forget to submit your questions in the Q&A. And also the recording link um, for this webinar will be sent out to everybody who registered. Okay, next slide. Great. Uh, so the applications requirement, uh, there is a, an application. Um, and if you click the apply now, it will take, uh, it'll take you directly to the application. Um, I believe uh, this webinar is intended for domestic students that are applying, and, and those students would pay $70 for the application. Um, uh, international students um, that would have visa considerations uh, have to pay a little bit extra for that processing, so that's $90. And um, the, those fees are, um, are required to pay for the processing of the applications, and so we can't consider any of the applications without um, without that application fee being paid. Um, on the application, uh, the most important thing to have in your application is, to, is, is the application itself. Make sure you fill out every single uh, text box uh, for your background and data structures and algorithms and uh, object-oriented programming and linear algebra and statistics and probability. We'll be looking at those very carefully and make sure you've uploaded your transcripts uh, you can upload an unofficial copy of your transcripts for your application, and then if you're admitted and enroll, we'll need your official transcripts uploaded in that first semester. Um, so, and, and make sure that when you upload your unofficial um, uh, scan of your uh, transcripts, that it's legible. I've, I've seen some uh, applications where the transcript is so tiny and the resolution so poor that we weren't able to fully evaluate that. So make sure. It doesn't have to be ridiculously uh, high resolution. Um, just make sure it's legible, that you can read all of the uh, elements there. Um, there are standardized tests that you can take, a GRE and a GMAT and so on. It's great if you take those, but we do not require those of any of our graduate programs. We don't require those for the MCS or the master's degree or our PhD program. Um, and uh, the same with letters of recommendation. We use letter of, letters of recommendation a lot for our PhD program when we're matching students up with advisors, but for the MCS, it's a coursework program. You're, uh, it consists of eight courses um, that are kind of a capstone, a graduate capstone professional degree. Uh, you don't write a, a thesis, you, you don't work directly with an advisor, and there's no pairing with an advisor. Um, so for the, um, uh, for the MCS, um, we'll consider the letters of recommendation, but they're not required. Um, the letters of recommendation are helpful if you take, you know, if you don't have coursework in an area and you want to use some some work um, that you've done in an area. Um, in general, that doesn't. Uh, it's not very helpful to to have only that. It's much better to have uh, coursework in data structures and algorithms and object oriented programming. But if you do want to list some work that you've done for that uh, in lieu of a course, then it's, um, it's, uh, it will help if you have a letter of recommendation from a manager 
that can speak specifically to your work on object-oriented programming or data structures and so on. Um, but that's that usually isn't as helpful as if you have a course, a graded uh, transcriptable course in the uh, in a particular area. And then um, a statement of purpose and a resume are always helpful. We'll refer to those um, and, uh, if we have any questions on the applications. Uh, anything you want to add to that? I do want to add a little bit. So the webinar is for domestic students, but we have in our student population, many students who are domestic students, but who may have completed their, for example, undergraduate degrees outside the United States. So if you are, um, one of those potential applicants, um, you, there are some ways to request an exemption from standardized tests because you would be um, required otherwise to submit scores depending on when your um, education is completed. So there are, there are details that are kind of very buried in there. If you have questions, please let us know that we just want to bring to your attention that some of the domestic students may need to um, provide some extra documentation. Yeah. Um, and then one thing to add about the transcripts, in addition to them being, you know, legible and clear, um, just make sure that the institution's name is 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 listed on the transcript and your confer degree conferral date is listed as well. That'll making sure that information is on there will help expedite things a little bit, just a little bit. And also one other thing of the grading scale. If this yes. Is before the grading scale, we need to see what classes you have taken and what grades were earned and what the grading scale that your institution used. So you can find it sometimes in the back of the transcript page or sometimes it comes as a separate page at the end of the, um, end of the transcript. Some institutions, overseas institutions, would provide grade sheets or mark sheets. For example, from India, you would see mark sheets and those are acceptable as as long as we can see the scale. Okay, I think that is all we have for this slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and advance it. Okay. I want to talk about tuition and financial aid. Yeah, so um, tuition is for the NCSDS track and also the, the general NCS program is $600 per credit hour. So if you take one class, which is uh, for credit hours, it's going to be $2,400 for that course. And that counts up to $19,200 for the total of 32 credit hours. Um, there, is, um, there are some additional fees that you would um, directly pay towards Coursera because you are you taking the courses on their platform. And there's also some additional fees for the classes that would have exams for proctored exams. All our exams are proctored so that we can um, ensure integrity of the exam process. So there are some additional fees that you would um, incur, but that information we will show a link at the end of this slide deck for the details. For financial aid, um, since um, this is for domestic students, this is an accredited program. Um, it's accredited by the um, Higher Learning Commission, and you are eligible to apply for federal financial aid, and you can do that um, by completing the FAFSA forms. And there's a link on this slide where you, know, you can go on our website, on the campus website, and look at those details. Um, the department, does not offer assistantships, research or teaching assistantships to students in our online programs, in any of our online programs, um, including the data science track and the overall comprehensive masters of computer science program. So, but then there are also, so the, going back, getting to the next bullet point, so there are several of our students who are sponsored by their, uh, for example, employers. There, there can be tuition reimbursement programs, there can be outright um, financial aid programs. So if you are um, able to receive that type of assistance, there is a, there is a um, process where your employer or the sponsor can directly pay your tuition bill to the university so that it doesn't have to go through you. 
or it could be that you would have to be reimbursed at the end of the term. And if you do want to be part of this third party billing process, there's some more information again for which the link is provided there. No, I think I think you went over it fine. I'll just emphasize that we do not have any uh, any financial aid or scholarships or assistance ships that are available for students in this program. Um, uh, and uh, a part of our ability to offer this program to a much broader um, uh, cohort of learners uh, to be able to get the master's of science, a master of computer science uh, degree, uh, especially in this format. Um, uh, we haven't been able to um, extend uh, any of that uh, um, uh, tuition waivers or anything like that to, to students in this program. It, it, it depends on the tuition dollars in order to be able to run the program. Um, and uh, it's also very affordable. It's under 20000 in tuition um, with a few extra uh, additional uh, fees. You have to pay for the individual um, MOOCs that you take along with the courses. And so the... Um, uh, the videos are on the Coursera format in MOOC format, and so that's similar to the, to the lectures that you would go to for a class. And so uh, there's about $160 for each class um, in MOOC fees that you'd pay on top of the um, uh, $2,400 per class. So that's $600 per credit hour in each class is four credit hours long. <laughs> And then um, there's, a, there's proctoring fees and, and a few other, some cloud computing fees if you use additional cloud computing resources. So um, uh, it's a small amount of uh, fees on top of the 19200, but all, all together much more affordable than our students are paying to, to get this degree on campus, for example. And also much more flexible, you're paying by the credit hour so that if you need to take a break um, and uh, uh, take your, um, uh, if you're taking classes and then something comes up at work or something comes up at home and you need to take a semester off or a, a couple semesters off, you don't have to pay a thing. Uh, if you take these classes, if you're an on-campus student, you would still have to pay tuition even for those uh, uh, semesters that you were missed or, uh, missing or taking off. So um, uh, we, we try to keep the, the, the price of the uh, degree program fixed. And uh, so the total tuition is under $20,000. And so if you're not taking classes, you don't have to pay. If you decide not to take classes for a semester, um, just send us a note because we like to keep track of all of our students, making sure everybody's making progress to the degree. Um, and so that's, that's useful, but uh, you won't be charged anything for that semester. Okay, why don't we go ahead and move to the next slide, Christine. There we go. Great. And there's some, uh, some links. Uh, the program website, the, uh, the quick link to that uh, is cs.illinois.edu slash mcs-ds. And that gets us, uh, and then you, you can apply by going to mcs-ds apply. We're in the process of broadening the degree to a full MCS beyond data sciences, but we're still using that uh, dash ds link. Um, so that will, that, that will always work, um, but uh, you can use that link even if you want the regular MCS instead of a data science focus. Um, and then you can check on your application through the, uh, the, that link there. And you can look for financial aid. We have a financial aid office here. The department doesn't provide any financial aid. The university, uh, there might be some programs um, that, uh, that that website will point you to but really your best chance at a scholarship or financial aid is, is to kind of, um, is to take a look at um, um, you know, your employer, your state, uh, any organizations you belong to, they have financial aid available for you for that. And the website there can help, um, help point you to those, but uh, um, uh, there won't be anything available directly through the university. It's, it's often pointing you at those organizations and, and other opportunities for financial aid that are independent. So uh, I see somebody asked the question, any financial aid in the chat room? One, that should go in the Q&A box, but two, um, there is financial aid available, um, not through the university, but independently, uh, college loans and, and other opportunities. Let me also mention that the Master of Computer Science that we offer online is a Master of Computer Science degree. There's no distinction about it being online it meets the same requirements as our on-campus uh, degree. The classes meet the same requirements as our on-campus classes do. 
uh, that taught by the same professors uh, from, you know, uh, from the same set of requirements. Uh, with that said, uh, the MCS that we offer online is also accredited by the HLC, um, and that makes it eligible for financial aid, the same as um, our Master of Computer Science on campus. So there's no barriers to financial aid. Uh, we just don't need to, um, uh, we, we just don't offer any financial aid for this program through the university. There's, there's, there's nothing available uh, directly through the university for that. Okay, great. So that concludes the slides. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Um, we did get some questions submitted in advance. So if we could just maybe go through these first and then start addressing the questions that have been dropped in the Q&A. Okay. Okay, so first question, um, and you briefly touched on this already, but the question is, what is the difference between the masters of, between this master of CS and a master of science of CS? A very good question. So um, those are both master's degrees. The Master of Computer Science is a professional degree. It's a coursework-based degree. And uh, it consists of eight courses and then a degree. Our, our screen went blank, but I think we're still transmitting. There we go. And so um, uh, that means that uh, you come in, you take your classes, and you graduate. We've got students graduating in just a, a, a couple of weeks here. Um, I think it's next week they'll be, uh, they'll be here. When you graduate with this degree, you are more than welcome to come to campus and walk uh, for, your, uh, um, for your diploma. And, uh, and you get a, a degree that says Master of Computer Science uh, from the University of Illinois. It won't say online or anything like that. Um, online and on campus and mixed modes are all different ways we teach, but we're all teaching the same thing. So um, that's a Master of Computer Science. A Master of Science degree is the same number of courses, um, except some of those courses are um, considered thesis research and you're paired up with an advisor and you have to do research, which means you have to make some, um, some new um, contribution to the state of the art. And uh, that's a, a very difficult program to get into. You have to have research experience. The, um, the professors will go through each uh, application individually and look for students to work with on those things. And so um, uh, it takes generally longer to get a, a master's of science degree. Uh, it's harder to get into. You have to have research experience. And that's because um, you're gonna have to work with an advisor and advance the state of the art. With that said, we have masters of computer science students advancing the state of the art too. And there's nothing to keep you from you know, publishing papers and doing any of these things. But uh, for the Master of Computer Science, it's designed for professional preparation. And so the focus of that is coursework. Uh, some of the courses that we have, one of the courses uh, is a capstone. And you're not required to take a capstone, but we offer capstones currently in cloud computing and in data mining. So if you take two of the data mining classes or two of the cloud computing classes, then you satisfy the prerequisites for a capstone. And the capstone project is, um, is not writing a thesis, but basically um, it's reading groups for, um, for papers at the state of the art in that particular area. And then you make presentations of those papers that other students can benefit from in your class. And so you're reading and presenting um, the, the most up-to-date state of the art cutting edge work in cloud computing or data mining, and also completing a project in data mining or, or cloud computing. So, so those uh, options are available to you um, to, um, to bring you up to speed into the state of the art, um, but that's the difference between a master's of computer science and a master's of science. I, I will also say that um, when you have a master's of computer science, most, most people tend to take that degree um, and, and, and then work in industry, treating that degree as terminal. Um, you can always get a PhD. If you um, uh, typically, uh, a student will get a master's of science degree and then can, can go on and get a PhD. Um, students can get a PhD, they can, they can apply for and be accepted into the PhD program without a master's of, of science degree. So you, you don't need a master's degree to apply for a PhD. Um, and if you get an, a master of computer science degree, uh, you can always later on go for a PhD and apply for a PhD and get a PhD. So there's nothing to uh, prevent you from doing that. 
but the Master of Computer Science doesn't really help you towards applying for the PhD because you're not making, uh, you're not writing a thesis, you're not getting that research experience. So the Master of Computer Science doesn't have that research component. Um, uh, it's just based on the same coursework, um, but doesn't have that research or thesis writing uh, component to it. Great, very good, thank you, John. Um, let's see, next question. Are the material of the courses completely similar to the one taught on campus or is it simplified version um, for it to be on the online experience? Yeah, it is not simplified. <laughs> um, uh, our online courses are taught at the same level as our on-campus courses. We have, um, some of our professors have offered the same exams to our online students and on-campus students, and we've seen the same performance from the students. Um, and in many of the cases, we are teaching the classes concurrently so that the students can uh, um, help each other out. Uh, with that said, we have some differences in focus areas. All of our online classes meet the same requirements as our on-campus classes. But for example, the MCS in data science, um, on campus, we might offer a class that is in general distributed computing. Um, when we offer it online uh, through the data science track, um, that, that class is offered as cloud computing concepts. And that's because we're teaching distributed computing, but we're focusing all the exercises on cloud computing examples. So there are differences between classes, both uh, we offer the same, we may offer the same class on campus in two different forms. We offer uh, classes in, in different forms, focusing on different things online and on campus. It's entirely up to the instructor, um, but they are all taught at the same level. And, and uh, uh, you know, we also have our on-campus classes available, videos from our on-campus classes available to students that, that, and our online students have referred to that to make sure that, uh, but they're being taught in their online classes the same as the on-campus class. Um, you're welcome to sit in to, on any of our classes, um, and, uh, but uh, the students that have done that have, have verified that we're teaching the same material in all of our classes. Okay, great. Uh, next question. How much interactions will be offered needed by the course? So I guess how much interaction is available? Yeah, um, so uh, even for our on-campus classes, I would teach a class of 200 students. The students who show up, I would lecture. They rarely ask a question. They go back to their dorm rooms, uh, you know, whatever they're doing. And then they'd ask a bunch of questions on Piazza. But the same is true for our online students. So our online students, you will watch a video. The videos are in MOOC format, so they're broken up into little five to 15 minute segments. And so you can, you can grab a segment while you're commuting to work or you can binge watch the whole week's worth of lectures uh, over a weekend uh, uh, afternoon. Uh, um, the, they're designed to, to focus on, on particular uh, elements of the class. And, uh, and then there's opportunity to discuss the material with the TAs, the instructor, and other, uh, other classmates. And we actually encourage a lot of discussion between classmates, both in our on-campus classes and in our online classes. There's a lot of peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning that's, that's been shown to, to be really helpful for, for learning. Um, and so there's that interaction, plus each of our class will have um, uh, sets of office hours. And we try to offer the office hours at different times of day because we've got people all over the world, we've got Australia, Siberia, e everywhere. And so we, um, we try to offer the uh, office hours at various times of the day and night um, for students to come in and ask the instructor or the TAs uh, specific questions about the material. And so there's that level of interaction as well. Okay, great. All right, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the Q&A forum. Um, let's see, first question, is there a tuition break for Illinois residents? So the good thing is in the online programs, there's no tuition differential, so regardless of where sorry, regardless of where, where you are a resident of, it is the same $600 per credit hour of tuition assessment. Okay, very so good. That's still great, yeah. but it is a very manageable um, tuition rate compared to what our on-campus students would pay, um, and even compared to some of the tuition rates that our previous online students have been assessed. Yep, 
So Illinois students are paying the lowest rate we offer for this program. <laughs> <laughs> but so is everybody else. So we, we've designed this program to try to keep the costs as low as possible. So there's, there's no differentials. Okay. We're in Illinois, um, feel, you know, one, if you're enrolled in this program, you are a University of Illinois student, the same as anybody else. So you have access to campus, to the libraries. If you are in Illinois and you want to come visit campus, uh, um, you can take advantage of student discounts and everything else um, if you're enrolled in this program. Um, and that's true of everybody uh, enrolled uh, in this program. Okay, great. Okay, next question. How long will a session take? So perhaps that's how long is a class, the duration of the class? We offer our classes on the same semester timetable as our on-campus classes. And in many cases, uh, some of our classes will be offered concurrently with our on-campus classes. And there's interaction between the on-campus students and the online students. Uh, that's been helpful for both. In other cases, they're they're separated, and we're offering a, a separate section on online, and, and maybe offering at a different time of that class on campus. Um, but it's always on a semester timetable. So there's a fall semester that's 15 weeks long, a spring semester that's 15 weeks long, and then a summer term that's about 12 weeks long. We offer classes in all three of those terms. But let me also say that in the summer we have uh, fewer classes that are offered. Um, so it's something to take into consideration as you're mapping out what classes to take, that we've got fewer classes offered in the summer than in the fall and the spring. Um, and also I've noticed in, te in teaching classes in the summer that, um, um, that many students actually go on vacation, um, have family vacations and other work breaks. And so that's often a really good time to, to take a break from your studies. Um, uh, and to focus on the fall and the spring. But in some of our cases, the data visualization class, for example, is only offered in the summer. And so the, there's opportunity to take that. Uh, let me also add that all of our classes are offered at least once per year so that you can complete the degree in as little as one year. Um, but you need to map out the classes uh, between the fall semester, the spring semester, and the summer term. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, next question. Um, by anonymous attendee, the BS degree that I have, I received from a university that is nationally accredited, not regionally accredited. Will I be disqualified from admission from MCS online program um, from the U of I? A good question. Yeah, please. Um, so it is, the graduate college does require regional accreditation. Um, while it is not um, completely ruled out. In the past, we have had students who, who, have, who came from nationally accredited institutions who were denied admissions by the graduate college. Okay. So be an uphold battle. Yes. Uh, okay. Oh, can I use Mathematica for machine learning and data science? Uh, that depends. So I believe currently um, <clears throat> um, our, uh, um, our machine learning class, our applied machine learning class has been, um, the assignments have been in R, and I think there's Python versions of these. So um, in general, no. Um, in the past also, there's, there's been, you know, people have used uh, uh, MATLAB, but we've, we've largely switched to Python for many of our assignments there. So uh, those tools are good, um, but uh, for many of the assignments, um, for this many students, one of the important things is for us to, uh, for our um, teaching assistants not to spend all of their time grading. We want our teaching assistants to be spending time helping you complete your uh, assignments, uh, giving you advice, and not uh, grading. So we have to be very rigid on the assignments that we hand in. So um, in many cases, you have to use a particular programming language that the class is using or a particular infrastructure that the class is using to hand in the assignments. So you're free to use Mathematica, and it's a great way to learn a, a lot of areas of data science and machine learning. But for the assignments, you may not, it, it may be the case that you won't be able to use Mathematica for that particular assignment. Uh, we try to be as flexible as we can, but um, uh, we also want to make sure that we're using the um, the teaching resources we have uh, as best we can. And if we have an open-ended assignment where you can use any language at all, 
uh, it tends to uh, occupy a lot of teaching assistant time, and that's less time they have to help you finish the assignments. Great. Thank you, John. Next question. Do I explicitly need a four-year undergrad degree to qualify? I have a three-year degree, a three-year comp sci diploma at the college level, and work experience. Would this be fine? Uh, it depends on the degree. Um, the Greg College website has some information on this. Do you have anything more specific? Yes. So if you go to the Graduate College website and search for your for the country where your bachelor's degree is awarded, then you can check the um, requirements. There are some countries from where three-year degrees may be accepted. And you also said that you have a postgraduate diploma. So postgraduate diplomas can be considered if they're awarded by accredited, accredited universities or colleges. If they were offered by a um, general uh, private agency or an institution, then those will not be considered. So it, it, this, there are nuances in answering this question, but you can also look at the graduate college website to see if your three-year degree is approved. Perfect, thank you, Vivica. Uh, next question. Should I have data structures course in my undergrad degree? Is this a requirement? Yes, data structures itself is a, is a requirement. It's best if you've taken it as a, uh, uh, as a credit bearing graded transcripted course. So, so it appears on your transcripts. If you've taken it in your undergrad, that's great. Uh, if you haven't, um, you can take it at a community college or you can take it through another online program. Um, it's always helpful to show a transcripted graded version of that course because we not only look that you've taken the course But we're also want to make sure that you've got a good grade in that course uh, We look at grades as well as the fact that you've taken classes uh, and making sure you can get through the uh, computer science graduate level coursework um, You can also take the uh, take it as a, a MOOC sequence. Uh, there are um, San Diego and Stanford and uh, Duke and others um, offer uh, data, data structures classes as a specialization sequence of MOOCs. And so you can take that and we will consider that. It's not as strong as having a grade on a transcript because the um, specialization sequences don't result in, in an in actual letter grade. It's, it's just a binary pass or not. So, um, so that's an option. If you do that, make sure you get a um, certificate that you've completed the course and include the URL for that certificate for your completion of that course in your application material and text box under data structures. Um, if, if you use data structures at work, you can, you can mention that, but that is an uphill battle. It's, it's always better to be able to show proficiency um, with an academic course that, that that shows that we've had comprehensive uh, coverage of all the data structures and, and instead of just a, a few uh, data structures that you may have implemented. Um, so that's, um, that, that's been uh, a, a strong requirement. We need to make sure that you've got all coverage of all the basic fundamentals of computer science to make sure you can get through those graduate classes. Okay, very good. So I know we have quite a few people from Illinois, um, and Matt Sweeney is asking, does this program accept the employee tuition waiver for the University of Illinois at Chicago employees? That's the first time we've gotten that question. <laughs> so yeah, it does. Yes, it does. So the tuition that is assessed by the university will be under the employer benefits. But the other fees and the other fees that you would uh, that a student needs to pay to Coursera and the proctoring fees, those are not assessed by the university and would have to be borne out of pocket. Yes. Yeah. So so nineteen thousand two hundred dollars in tuition would okay. would be eligible uh, for that employee program. Uh, the additional couple hundred dollars per class um, uh, they would have to pay for the okay. for the move fees and the proctoring. Okay, great. Um, let's see, Lena is wondering, um, the Coursera link doesn't have the curriculum for the Master of Computer Science. Where can I get a list of the courses? So for MCS, the list of courses is not yet posted to our website, but the list of courses for MCSDS is available on the MCSDS website. Yep, yeah, we'll be rolling courses out through, through the year. Um, so if you go to the MCSDS, you'll see the list of courses that we have available. In addition to that, some of the courses that we'll be rolling out this year, a course in parallel programming, 
um, uh, a course in software engineering, um, I believe a course in programming languages, and a course in scientific computing. And there's even more in the works uh, that will be rolling out uh, uh, subsequent to that. Okay, great. Um, Andrew is asking, I've read that you can start the program through Coursera before officially being accepted. Can I get more details about this process? Sure. Um, so, for example, our, our data mining courses and our cloud computing courses were developed based on the MOOCs that are part of the data mining and cloud computing specialization sequences available on the Coursera platform. So the lectures um, are, are used for those MOOCs and there's some, uh, you know, some assignments and quizzes. That experience is similar to auditing a course, to basically sitting in on a course. So you can just show up on campus and you can come into a classroom and listen to a lecture uh, if you want. Um, and that's the experience you, you get from a MOOC. Um, there are some, some assignments that are uh, peer graded or auto graded um, that are kind of day to day assignments, but not the level of projects and proctored exams that were required for credit. So you can certainly see the lectures that we'll be using for the classes, and you can do some of the, the day to day assignments, the week to week assignments uh, in those MOOCs to make sure that you, you, know, you can understand the material enough to succeed in the, in the program. If you then take the class for credit, you don't have to sit through all that video again. You don't have to you know, sit, sit in class again if you've already been through all the video. Uh, but you would still need to complete the class projects, uh, the programming projects, and take the proctored exams. Um, so, the, um, so there is a pathway that uh, you, can, you can try the MOOCs online um, before taking the, the class uh, for credit. Um, for most students, if you, you know, um, it, it's, it's a good pathway if you're not sure you can handle the material. That's a, a good way of, of listening to the lectures to, to make sure they're at the level that, uh, that you feel comfortable with. For most students, it's always best just to, to take the class and to see the lectures at the same time that you're doing the projects. That, that's the best way to learn if possible. But both options are available to you. Great. Thank you, John. The next question I think should address a lot of the questions that are coming through. And um, it's with regards to GPA. Does GPA criteria really affect the selection procedure given I have almost four years of IT industry experience? So maybe we can address the minimum required GPA by the graduate college and then what is the threshold for incoming MCS students? Sure, sure. Um, so uh, we, we've posted a, uh, a GPA of 3.2 or higher for admissions, but you know, we use a holistic admissions process. We will consider everything, uh, including GPA. If your GPA fell below, um, you know, that's your four-year GPA. We, we, the graduate college specifically looks at your GPA in the last two years of your classes. We're going to look very closely at your grades in your computer science classes. So we look at the whole application. Um, with that said, um, you know, we are a top five program in computer science and we get a lot of applications. We're only able to admit a quarter to a third of the applicants that we get. Um, but sometimes, uh, you know, there are surprises that uh, students, um, uh, you know, felt that their application wasn't as strong, but it actually was strong and we found something that we found um, very interesting in the application, a project you did, um, uh, a particular sequence of courses, a thirst for knowledge, the things that we look for when we're applying for a student. The main criterion we're looking for is success, that you've got the tools you need to be able to succeed in those eight classes for your master's degree in computer science and be able to take that degree and run with it. Um, and the, 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 your grade performance in prior classes in computer science, especially if you take in any um, senior level computer science classes at the undergraduate level, is a really good indicator of your ability to get through those uh, graduate level classes. Great. So we have a lot of questions with respect to how these courses how students sign up for courses, how student, how the courses are related to the MOOCs on Coursera and Coursera specializations. So maybe you can just talk about how you have to apply to the program, how, yeah. you know, okay, great. Yeah, yeah thanks, Christine. So um, the MOOCs on the, uh, um, on the Coursera platform are the lectures from our classes, and those are open enrollment. Anybody can take those. Uh, we put them out there. We have a, uh, an obligation to um, educate the world 
um, to the extent we can, and the Coursera platform is a great way for us to do that. Um, in addition to that, if you if you want a master's degree in computer science, you have to apply for the degree. That makes sure you have the necessary prerequisites, a bachelor's degree, and so on. And then we're offering these courses for university credit. We're conferring um, accredited university credit for these uh, courses. And so that means, uh, in addition to the lectures that you get on the Coursera platform, there are programming projects um, uh, and other assessments. There are um, uh, comprehensive examinations that are proctored, um, and they're proctored through an online proctoring service. Um, and, uh, and, you know, uh, and, you, and you get a, a transcripted grade, uh, and that leads to a degree. So, um, and, and part of getting through those assignments, those additional assignments and examinations, is, um, is the advice and interactions and, um, and lessons that you'll learn from the teaching assistants and from the instructors uh, through the interactions on the uh, um, um, on the discussion groups and in office hours. So those are available to help you get through the additional material you need, but those are only available to students that are admitted to the degree program. Perfect, thank you, John. And this one I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna put out there because I think it's kind of funny. Uh, Kevin, Kevin says, hi, I'm an old person. He's 36. <laughs> Uh, been in the industry for a long time. Will I fit in this crowd? What's the average age in this program? <laughs> Interesting. Um, I think it's 36, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's, it's up there. Um, yeah, on campus, we have a lot of students, not all, but we have a lot of students that are, of course, uh, um, uh, college age students, 18 to 22. And then our graduate students, uh, uh, it's a much greater span. But uh, you know, students in their twenties. Our online programs, um, we have a much wider range of, of students. I don't have the demographics in front of me, but I think thirty-six might be younger than our average student. Very good, thank you. Uh, let's see. Ah, how frequently can candidates reapply if not admitted the first time? Ah, uh, you can reapply as often as you want. Um, we try to give feedback. We can't, uh, given the num number of applications we give, we can't give personalized feedback for every application. But um, uh, if, you, if you don't get in, it's best not to send the exact same application mm -hmm. in. Um, uh, if, if you send the same application in, um, you'll, you'll get the same answer back. Um, you should look at the prerequisites, uh, the questions that we're asking, and making sure that you've got uh, transcripted course credit for each of those courses that we're looking for in data structures and um, object-oriented programming and algorithms and linear algebra and in uh, probability and statistics. Um, so so try, try to uh, uh, improve your application each time you resubmit it. Um, it's not just a roll of the dice. The, um, I want to go back to Kevin though. Uh, Kevin said he was working in industry and one of the other opportunities you have in this program is Slack. And so in addition to individual course discussion groups, we have a discussion group of all of our NCS uh, majors in this. And, and, and these are um, amazing discussion groups because we, we get students posting all sorts of interesting uh, anecdotes and information about the computing industry uh, on these dis discussion groups. Uh, somebody said, I'm, a, I'm 42, so I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> I think the I think I think thirty I think thirty six was under the average age looking at the chat group. So um, uh, uh, part of, part of the beauty of this program is the interaction we're seeing from the students in this program through that Slack uh, discussion group. Um, a wide variety of opinions. The students get very close uh, to each other. They form their own little project groups and discussion groups and so on. A lot of really useful information there and across the whole world, across all the age groups, and um, across people with uh, computing backgrounds as well as other disciplinary backgrounds. It's a, lot, it's a great place to uh, go for advice and, uh, and find you know, any other information you want to about, the, uh, about computing in general. Okay, great. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the hour. Um, do we want to answer one more? Are we good? I mean, That's there are a lot of questions. One more, let's see. Um, there is a question on here. Um, 
let's give this a, a stab. How is this program different or better than the Georgia Tech? I uh, love the Georgia Tech program. So yeah. uh, we designed this program with Georgia Tech's help. Uh, Georgia Tech and the University of Illinois are in communication with each other all the time. We are more interested in having uh, degrees in this format based on scalable MOOC uh, delivery of the information through the, uh, the video lessons, um, being able to offer and also asynchronously so you can work ahead in a course arbitrarily far ahead to, to be able to make time if you need to take some time away from the course in the middle of a course. We're more interested in making that work than in competing with each other. Um, so we're cheering Georgia Tech on, Georgia Tech's cheering us on, um, we have uh, some different emphases in our degrees, and we started our degree out with a strong emphasis in data sciences, and we're building out with our departmental strengths in high-performance computing, software engineering, parallel programming, and uh, scientific computing, um, and programming languages. Um, and, and so you should take a look at, at each of the programs and how they're offered, um, and, uh, um, uh, and, and make a decision based on that. Okay, great. So I think that concludes this webinar. Um, again, the recording will be sent out to everybody who registered. So expect that within a day or two, um, it'll come from the same email where you were sent the invitation to register. Um, so thank you everyone for your time. Thank you, John and Vivica. Um, I'll go ahead and end this and everybody have a great day. Hey, thanks, Christine. Thank you. Great job. Bye-bye.